Here's what I want to talk about. Let me tell you what I want to talk about. Um, and then try to walk through it. We're going to be in Genesis again. Genesis chapter 2. We're going to begin reading at verse 15 through 17. And then we're going to read the entire chapter of chapter 3. So that's where we're going to be. So just so you know where we're going to be. And uh, for those of you I haven't met, uh, let me exercise my manners that my mama taught me. My name is Devereaux Hubbard. And uh, it's a privilege to have you with us either for the first time online or in person. Uh, pleasure to have you join us and be with us uh, today uh, and uh, lead pastor here. So I get to share the word and we'll spend some time in the word. Our goal here is to provide teaching according to the word that can help us to actually live it. That's the goal, to provide teaching in such a way that we can actually live it. We don't just want to know it right? But we want to be able to live it, want to be able to walk it out. So that's the goal here. So my pace and my rhythm today uh, is, for those of you who are familiar, is going to be more of a teaching pace. Is that okay? Okay, more of a teaching pace. So here's where we are. We're going to be in Genesis 2 and Genesis 3. Here's the topic for today, uh, guardrails for life, why boundaries matter. Guardrails for life, why boundaries matter. This week, thank you for those of you who prayed with me, prayed for me this past week, had a few days to get away, try to spend some time with God, think about, pray about 2025, what God is saying to us, how God wants to challenge us in 2025. And uh, we went to Kentucky. Uh, so to everybody from Kentucky, thank God for you. Right, We traveled to Kentucky, traveled to Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, the particular route that we took to Lexington, Kentucky, uh, and then I also took a trip towards Louisville, Louisville but that's a whole other story, right? But the particular route uh, sent us through some areas that were uh, hilly. I wouldn't necessarily say mountains because I've seen mountains, but it was hilly. Anybody ever traveled to Kentucky and seen some of the Kentucky hills, right, the highs and lows, right, where you're on a hill and you're coming around the tall hills that are mountainous, and as you come around those tall hills, you see that dip, right, where you're going down and you look over and you see it's just green, right, and uh, it, it was during the trip that I was reminded uh, to be thankful for guardrails, right? <laughs> right? When you're traveling on roads like that, you are, you are thankful to God. Like, man, I'm so glad. I, I hope not to have to use them, right, uh, to get off track where that guardrail got to keep me on track. But I'm thankful to be able to see guardrails, right? Uh, they're there to protect us, to guide us, to provide some safety along the path. And I want to suggest on this morning that just like guardrails protect physically, that boundaries in our lives serve a similar purpose. That boundaries are often the personal rules and limits that are set for ourselves or those that we acknowledge that have been set by God for our protection and our safety. Boundaries, in a real sense, are invisible guardrails that guide us through the twists and the turns of life, keeping us from making choices that might hurt us or hurt others. Boundaries matter, we're going to see, because they give our lives structure, they give our lives safety. And just like a mountainous road without guardrails could be potentially dangerous, a life without boundaries can have some dire consequences. Boundaries protect us from things that can hurt us, but they help us also to adhere to our particular values and our beliefs. So by setting or embracing boundaries, we can live in a way that will honor God, live in a way that will honor ourselves, and live in a way that will honor others. Boundaries keep us on the right path. They protect us from harm and help us make 
good choices. So I want to suggest that whether you are 10 or 90, that understanding and respecting boundaries is essential. Regardless of age, understanding and respecting boundaries is essential. So as we explore today, Genesis beginning chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, and then Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 24, we'll see that God gave the first human beings boundaries, that he provided boundaries for them. And we'll see as we look through the passage that ignoring boundaries can lead to some serious consequences, but respecting them can help us to stay safe and to live well. So let's listen to the scripture because I don't want to assume that you are familiar with the biblical story. So Genesis chapter 2, beginning at verse 15, here is the announcement of the boundary that God establishes for humanity. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. All right, so pay attention. You can eat from any, right? Can eat, somebody say any, any, right? But you must not eat from one. Can somebody say one? one. All right. Genesis 3, 1 through 24. Long passage. Again, I don't want to assume that you've heard the story. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden. But about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or touch it or you will die. No, you will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom, so she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then he said, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man replied, the woman you gave to be with me. I don't know how, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate. So the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than any livestock and more than any wild animal. You will move on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. He said to the woman, I will intensify your labor pains. You will bear children with painful effort. Your desire will be for your husband, yet he will rule over you. And he said to the man, because you listened to your wife, right, willfully rebelled against God and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. You eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground, since you were taken from it. For you are dust, and you will return to dust. The man and his wife Eve, the, na the man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of the living. The Lord God made clothing from skins for the man and his wife, and he clothed them. 
The Lord God said, since the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not reach out, take from the tree of life, eat and live forever. So the Lord God sent him away from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove the man out and stationed the cherubim and the flaming, whirling sword east of the Garden of Eden to guard the way of the tree of life. Somebody say, thank God for the word of God. Wow, some good stuff in there. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to try to distill down um, some things that I saw as I read the Scripture. I understand as you read the Scripture, I only picked out six to share. One, because I thought 10 may be a bit much, right? Um, But you may see other things. I want to highlight uh, six things from this passage, six reasons that boundaries matter. And I just want to try to pick them up from the passage and then help us to see it and then think about how that potentially could be applied in our lives. So six reasons boundaries matter. Here's the first one. Boundaries matter because they have spiritual consequences. Consequences can be good or bad. But boundaries matter because they have spiritual consequences. As we look at Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve disobeyed the command of God. And once they disobeyed the command of God, they were aware that something changed. Okay? Right? So imagine a smoke detector going off when it senses smoke. It's loud. It's piercing. The alarm alerts us to the fact that something is wrong. Similarly, when Adam and Eve ate from the tree that God told them not to eat from, it was as though a conscience alert went off on the inside of them. Their their conscience was immediately aware that something is different, that something is wrong. There was a warning on the inside of them that was alerting them to the fact that, man, things are going awry. Adam and Eve's internal alarm signaled to them that they had crossed the boundary that God set. Their choice to do what was best in their eyes instead of doing what was best as declared by God had consequences. I'll say that again. Their choice to do what was best in their eyes as opposed to doing what was best according to what God told them had consequences. Immediately, the Bible says they have a sense of of guilt and shame, right, because they knew they crossed the line, right? And some of us know what it's like to have an immediate gut check, right? Immediate gut check when you lie a little, right? That immediate gut check, like, oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Right? That immediate gut check, like, ooh, I crossed the line, right? We, we know it's wrong, and, and, and we know it has consequences, right? And, and there's an immediate thing that goes on inside of them. Well, their immediate gut check had this effect spiritually. It caused them to hide from God, Right? It, it had spiritual consequence. They, they rebelled, crossed the line of the boundary that God has set. Scripture says uh, giving language to God as though God is a human being. We know that God is not a human being, but it gives language as though God is a human being, that God is walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and as God is walking, they hide from God, implying that this was not previously the case, that it was not previously the case where they would hide from God, but now because they cross the boundary, they understand something spiritually is different. Where, whereas before we may have run to him and be like, oh, you coming to hang out with us? Cool, right? Now they're like, oh, we need to hide. We know we've done something wrong and we don't want to see him, right? It's like a little kid, right? When they, when they know they do something wrong, right? And, and normally they would be out hanging out where you could see them, but, but the day they knew they did something wrong and they knew they couldn't hide the fact they did something wrong, they in their room. 
Right? And you go in, you're like, why are you in your room? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm in my room. Right? And they're just waiting on you to figure out that they crossed the line, that they violated a boundary. And it was like that for Adam and Eve, that consequence that God said, the day you eat from it, you will surely die. There, there is this thing that takes place where they are aware that there are spiritual consequences for us violating the boundaries that God has set. Boundaries matter because when we violate boundaries, they have spiritual consequences, right? They create something on the inside of us that causes us, instead of wanting to run to God, to run from God, right? And, and, and you can just, you could talk about whatever boundaries, but, but there are boundaries of integrity, boundaries of, of life, whatever they may be that, that have spiritual consequences that impact and influence our desire, our thoughts about God's willingness to still be with us because we are aware that we cross the line. Anybody ever had the experience where you were aware you crossed the line with God? Right? And it's like, ooh! Like, when the last time you talked to God? Yeah, we haven't talked in a while. We haven't talked in a while. We haven't talked in a while. <laughs> right? It's as though, right, hiding is going to work. Right? So first thing I want to highlight is that boundaries matter because they have spiritual consequences. Some of us have been dealing with spiritual consequences because of some of the boundaries that we've crossed. And um, I don't want to wait to the end to say, no matter what you do, please know you can always run to God. No matter how bad it is, no matter how ugly it is, he already knows. He already knows, right? And here's the thing, right? <laughs> right? Because, I, man, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on this point, but let me, let me just lean in, right? Uh, here's the thing, right? Because I've, I've, I've done it, right? I, I, man. Um, so context. My nickname as a child was Devil. Context. Some of my uncles forget, and they still to this day call me devil. That's context to help you understand my pattern of behavior, okay, right? And my mindset sometimes when I would cross the line and boundaries was, oh, okay, I know hiding doesn't work. Maybe if I just fess up, there won't be consequences. How do you think that works? Right? So I say that to say, no matter what you do, run to God, don't hide from God. There's still. All right? So here's reason number two, boundaries matter. Boundaries matter not only because they have spiritual consequences. Boundaries matter because they have emotional consequences. Adam and Eve were initially naked, unashamed, possessing an innocent self-awareness that allowed them to see themselves positively. Their nakedness was pure, untainted, as they had no knowledge that would cause them to view themselves negatively. However, once they crossed the line, violated the boundary that God set, it corrupted their perspective. They became self-conscious about their bodies viewing their nakedness, which God declared as good, as something shameful, initially made in the image and likeness of God, and because their identity is rooted in their relationship with God, they have a positive view of themselves. But now that they've crossed the line, the boundary, their view of themselves changes. It's like if you're at a carnival and you go into one of those rooms with mirrors, right? Sometimes you go to a carnival and they have the little mirror area and you know when you stand and look in the mirror, the mirror is distorted, right? So you look like body over here, head like that, right? But because you went into the mirror place, you know 
it's a distorted view of you. It's not accurate, right? Once they crossed the line, here's what happened. They had a distorted view of themselves that affected them emotionally. So now they're carrying shame and guilt. And some of us know what it's like once we cross certain lines to begin to take on a distorted, corrupted view of ourselves. So we no longer see ourselves as good. We see ourselves as dirty. We no longer see ourselves as image bearers in the image of God, but but we see ourselves as something wrong with us, that we are now tainted, that we are now messed up, that there's no way that anybody could ever love us or embrace us, right? Because we have this distorted view of ourselves because we've crossed boundaries. It has emotional consequences. And many of us carry that weight all day long, all week long, all month long. Many of us carry that weight for years of emotional consequences of crossing boundaries and crossing boundaries and crossing boundaries, which give us a distorted view of ourselves. And I just want you to hear this morning that that is the attack of the enemy. The attack of the enemy is to get us to begin to believe that we are not who God created us to be, that we are not image bearers of God. The attack of the enemy is to cause us to see ourselves as separate from God versus to see ourselves in the likeness of God. That's the attack. And because of that attack, we carry those emotional consequences. We carry them into church services. And we carry them into prayer meetings and we carry them into our marriage and we carry them into work. We carry them with us day in and day out. Those are the consequences of crossing boundaries or lacking boundaries. See, boundaries matter because they carry with them emotional consequences. Thirdly, boundaries matter. This one got me because they help maintain financial health and stability or when violated, impacts financial health and creates instability. It's right there. Genesis 3 and 17, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, the ground was cursed because of Adam's sin, making it difficult for him to cultivate and produce food. God said, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. This meant that Adam would have to toil and struggle to provide for his family, indicating a loss of ease and abundance previously enjoyed in Eden. The curse turned what was once a joyful, fulfilling task into a laborious and challenging struggle. This biblical story highlights a crucial point. Ignoring boundaries can lead to significant financial and provision-related consequences in our lives. Just as Adam faced increased difficulty in producing food, violating boundaries can lead to instability and lack. For many of us, we are aware that there are economic disparities and systemic challenges that make financial stability even harder for us to achieve. It's important for us to acknowledge that. It's important for us to acknowledge that there are external factors that are beyond our control. For example, we don't control inflation. However, there are factors that are within our control that we have to be mindful of. For example, consistently violating the boundary of spending more than we bring in can lead to financial in stability, making it harder for us to afford the essential items that we need like food and and, and housing and health care, the stress that comes because we violate that boundary of extending ourselves and overextending ourselves or example poor decisions such as not paying our bills on time because I was just looking at something on the news where they were talking about Americans uh, would make the choice not to pay their bills so they could take a vacation, right? That They did a survey and there was a large percentage of Americans who say, man, if I have a choice between paying my bills and taking a vacation, I'm going to put my money towards the vacation. My bills can wait, right? Right? That has consequences, 
right? And, and when we engage in those kind of choices, right, not only do they have immediate consequences, but, but they pose a challenge for us in the present, and they potentially pose a challenge for us in the future. Young people, young people, please learn from many of us. Take advantage of the opportunities that are before you now. Please learn from many of us. I know sometimes school is boring, and I know sometimes you're trying to figure out what's the point of all this? What's the point of geography? What's the point of geometry? But I want to encourage you, take advantage of the opportunity to learn as much as you can to get some certificates and stuff, to get some skill training so that 20 years from now, you're not kicking yourself because you violated boundaries and made poor choices. And now, because of the choices you made when you were a teenager, you're in your 40s and your 50s, and you still can't catch up. <laughs> boundaries matter because they impact us financially and they impact our stability. Much like Adam struggled to produce food from the cursed ground, ignoring boundaries can create a never-ending cycle of toil and stress. So just trying to say boundaries matter. They help us to maintain financial health. Ignoring them will have consequences. Here's the next one. Boundaries matter because they have physical consequences. When Adam and Eve disobey God, they faced immediate physical consequences. God told Eve that she would experience increased pain in childbirth, directly linking her disobedience to physical suffering. Introdu this introduced a new dimension of pain and suffering into the human experience, illustrating that violating boundaries can lead to significant physical consequences. Additionally, God declared that humans would return to the dust signifying the introduction of physical death into the human experience. This pronouncement underscored the ultimate physical consequences of their actions, which is mortality. The reality of physical death became a part of the human existence because of their rebellion. Ignoring boundaries can lead to a host of physical consequences. Boundaries related to rest, boundaries related to nutrition, Boundaries related to exercise are crucial for our physical health. And ignoring these boundaries can result in stress, can result in fatigue, and can result in burnout. For example, not getting enough sleep can weaken our immune system, right? And you know what happens when our immune system is weakened, right? It, it's as though our protection system has gone down, which now makes us vulnerable to all kinds of attack, making us more susceptible to illness. Poor nutrition can lead to various health problems, right, including obesity and diabetes and heart disease, which I might add, then has a financial layer to them, right? So when we have obesity and we have heart disease and we have diabetes, there's a financial layer because now we got extra doctor's visits and now we got extra supplies and now we got extra medicines, right? High blood pressure, all of that impacts us Physically, failing to exercise can result in decreased physical fitness and increased chronic disease risk, right? All I'm trying to say is when we ignore the boundaries. So, again, just like we talked about with education, can, can we just tell the truth? Some of us who have lived long enough, can we just, we don't, we don't give testimonies like this, right? We don't give testimonies like, don't do what I did, <laughs> right? But maybe we need to give more testimonies like that. Don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. I, I ignored what the doctor said. I ain't go see the doctor. Let's start there. I didn't go see the doctor. Let's start there, right? I, and then I ignored what, everything I learned in health class about what to eat, what should be the proper portion of food on my plate. I ignored all of that, right? And as a result, here's what I'm dealing with today. We need to tell the truth and shame the devil. Here's what I'm dealing with today because I ignored all of that. I didn't get sleep. Here's what I'm dealing with today because I ignored all of that. I, I've had this and I've had that because I ignored all of that. Let's tell the truth about the consequences of ignoring boundaries and how they impact us physically. So boundaries are important. They matter 
because they help protect our physical health and our well-being. And thank God, I feel like I need to make this caveat as well, thank God that even in oftentimes our neglect of ourselves, He is gracious. Right? Now, we don't want to celebrate our violation of boundaries, but we want to celebrate the fact that God can keep us even after we violated boundaries. Right? Because there's some of us in the room who know I should have been dead and gone. Based on all the stuff that I violated, I should have been dead and gone. But God, because of His grace, has allowed me to live a little while longer. I want you to know, it's not because I've done right. It's just because God has been so good. Right? So boundaries matter. Boundaries matter uh, because they have relational consequences. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, their rebellion led to a fundamental shift in their relationship with their creator, resulting in guilt and shame and a sense of separation. This strained relationship with God impacted their relationship with each other. Mm. Thank you, God. Uh, They were no longer secure mm, with one another. Because when you carry in shame and you carry in guilt and you wrestling with a whole bunch of your own stuff, it's hard to trust that somebody else can love you for you because you're struggling to love you for you. (laughs) Right? So just as they hid from God, they hide from one another. Their safety, their security, their vulnerability with one another is on display. They no longer felt comfortable being seen and accepted. Mm. Oh, thank you, God. See, um, a beautiful place in spiritual growth, maturity in life is when you can get to the place where you see you for you, know that God see you for you, and you okay knowing that other people see you for you. Right? Because, because in that, it, it, it's not an arrogance, it's not anything like that. It's like, no, I know I, know I have issues. Right? And I know God knows I have issues. I want you to know I have issues. But, but I've gotten to a place where I'm not going to allow my awareness of my issues to cause me to act funny with you. Because they're not your issues, they're my issues. So why would I impose my issues upon you by acting funny with you because they're my issues? No, they're my issues. So because I'm dealing with my issues and I'm not aware of it, then now I start tripping with you. They saw themselves differently, so they saw one another differently. This dynamic introduced tension and conflict in their relationship, disrupting their harmony. They started to blame, which led to conflict. And blame shifting creates distrust. Mm. Because nobody could own their stuff. So this is a side note, this is a side note, this is a side note, relationally, and I'm not just talking about um, intimate romantic relationships, relationships in general. Sometimes the struggle of relationship is we don't own our stuff. So because you won't own your stuff, sometimes it's hard for me to relate to you. Because all I'm, I'm not, I'm not asking you to act like you don't have issues, I'm just asking you to own your stuff. Right? Because if you (laughs) own, the first step is acknowledging you got a problem. Right? So I just need you to own your stuff. We can work from there. But we at least have to start there. And because they couldn't own their stuff, then it created friction within their relationships. Anybody got some relationships right now like that? Now be careful. Because somebody might be sitting at home thinking, man, I hope they listening because they ain't on their stuff. (laughs) Be careful. (laughs) You thinking it's them, they they know it's you, right? Be careful. They they like, I don't want to start nothing before you get home, but listen in. Right? 
Relational challenges, relational challenges. Oh, thank you, God. Relational challenges, sometimes relational challenges. Sometimes uh, uh, those of us who are parents, sometimes the best thing we can do for our children is to own our stuff. <laughs> I know, it's all good. It's all good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it whether you, whether, you, whether you take it or not, right? Right? It's, it's being able, so I just, I just um, um, can I have permission? Mm. Okay. So I just had a conversation with my son, and um, I won't give the details of the conversation, but here's the conversation with my son. It's like, hey, man, as I'm looking back on some stuff, I realize that at a certain point in your life, I didn't give you what you needed because I was here. And my being here, I didn't know I was there, which meant I couldn't acknowledge it to you because I didn't acknowledge it to me. But now looking back, I see it. And because I see it, I just want to own it and say, this wasn't you. I don't know how it's had a ripple effect in your life, but I want to take it off you and I want to put it where it rightfully deserves, which is on me. And all I'm saying is it helps when we own our stuff. Relational consequence. Here's my last point, and here's why. Boundaries matter because they have an overall life and generational impact. As we've seen through the story of Adam and Eve, the consequences of violating boundaries can have profound and far-reaching effects impacting not just ourselves, but future generations. This historical lesson, more than just a tale from the past, is a living narrative that speaks directly to the power and necessity of boundaries in our own lives. You see, boundaries are not restricted barriers, but essential guardrails that guard, guide us towards a healthy and a fulfilled life. Understanding and respecting boundaries helps us to honor our values, protecting our well-being, cultivating meaningful relationships. The story of the fall in Genesis serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of boundaries and the consequences of neglecting them. Adam and Eve's decision to violate the boundary that God set led not only to personal suffering, but introduced sin and disharmony into the human experience. Hear that. Your sickness that you deal with today is a result of their crossing the line. Pain, heartache, trial, trouble, a result of them crossing the line not just for us, but you see it immediately. They cross the line. They're kicked out of the garden. And as they're kicked out of the garden, what happens with their children? Cain kills Abel, right? Their crossing the line creates this dysfunction in their family line that continues to repeat itself in various ways. And, and please hear that, that our crossing the line, our ignoring boundaries or lacking boundaries has a ripple effect. Many of us today, we talk about family dysfunction. It has a ripple effect, not only upon our children, but upon our children's children. It's like, why, why are we still doing this? Well, because mama said grandma was and great-grandpa was. That's how they were, right? So we passed on this sense of violating boundaries, not setting boundaries, not establishing boundaries. And they have a ripple effect in our families. So one of the things that uh, we learned to do um, in one of my classes is what's called a, a gene genogram. Is that it? Genogram, thanks. Uh, you'll also learn that if you take the mostly healthy spirituality class that's taught 
uh, by Gia and Julio Jones, right? So take that class as well, genogram. And what you basically do is you map out your family line. So you, you just, as much as you can remember, you're like, okay, my parents are, you write their names down. And who are their parents? You write their names down. And who are their parents? You write their names down. Who are their siblings? You write their names down. And as you start writing stuff down, and then you go back and you start tracking stuff. Like, okay, okay, who stayed married? Okay, well, my, okay, that's second wife, third wife, fourth wife, second husband, third husband, fourth husband. Who, who had kids just in the marriage? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, and that's, that's my brother by them, right, and that's my sister by them, right? And you start to look for patterns. What are the patterns of behavior? Where, where is there alcoholism in our family? Where is there addictions in our family? You start to look for patterns, and as you start to, to look for patterns within your family line, just by raising questions, you know the stuff we don't talk about? Just start raising questions. What were they like? What were some of their issues? I'm not trying to attack their issues. I'm trying to become, a, become aware of what might be my issues. Right? Right? So, so you start to track, and as you start to track, you start to see patterns. And as you start to see patterns, like, whoo, this is in our family line. Right? Every time we gather, man, we got a whole bunch of bottles at the gathering. That's in our family line. And here's been the impact of that. That's in our family line, right? And you can pick whatever the issue is, but track the issues. And here's what you begin to see, the generational impact of people crossing boundaries, right? Now, why do we want to become aware? We want to become aware so we can bring these things to God. And we say, you know what, God? I don't know about nobody else. But I'm going to set boundaries for me so that this stop right here. When, when they look back, this not going to be a part of, that's not going to be a part of my lineage, right? That, that's not going to be a part of my line. It's going to stop right here because by your grace and by your power, we're we going to overcome that in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to overcome that. We're going to overcome that. We ain't leaning into that. I don't have the power to do it in and of myself, but Jesus, I believe you can help me to do it. So we're going to overcome all of that. Now, why would you have that conviction? Because we see in Genesis that even with their failure, even with their crossing of the boundary line, that God intervenes to provide hope and help even in their crossing of the line. Genesis 3, 15, there is a promise tucked away in there that even though you got to deal with these consequences, I want you to know that there is a seed that's going to be born. And the seed that's going to be born, he going to crush the enemy's head. There, there's a seed that's going to be born. We call that seed. His name is Jesus. That seed is going to be born, and he's going to give you victory. God says, I intervene even in the midst of your mess to let you know that there is hope, that even though you violate a boundary, redemption is always available. Salvation is always available. Restoration is always available through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And some of us have to decide, it stops today. In my family line, it stops today. In my marriage, it stops today. With my children, it stops today. No more will this occur in my life. We will set the boundaries in place and honor God. Why? Because in Jesus, we are victorious. I'm done, but somebody ought to bless God. That in Jesus, it can stop today. I'm done, but somebody ought to bless God that things that have been don't have to be the same anymore because of Jesus. But you got to resolve in your head and your heart that boundaries matter. And because boundaries matter, then God help me to put in place the boundaries that are necessary for me to live the life you intended for me to live. The enemy has been robbing my family too long. Dysfunction been going through our line too long. And I want to say to you, you might be 70, it's not too late. If you 80, it's not too late. You can start where you are and say, today, God, I'm going to own my stuff. I'm going to surrender my stuff to you, and I'm going to trust you to help me to make it right. So today... Here is the challenge. Here is the encouragement. 
the opportunity is yours. The opportunity is yours. We're not going to blame anybody else. We're going to own our stuff, and we're going to move forward. We ain't going to spend a whole lot of time going backwards. It is what it is. We're going to move forward. I can't undo what I've done. I can own it and move on. So I'm going to own it, I'm going to move on, and I'm going to trust God for the rest. And if that's your desire today, it begins with you. Your conversation with God. So right where you are, you begin to talk to God. You know the stuff that's in your life. You know the stuff that's in your family. You know the stuff y'all been wrestling with. You know the stuff y'all won't talk about. Online, you know the stuff you've been carrying, the weight you've been under. Can we just lay it before God today? Say, you know what, God, here I am. I'm naked, God. Here it is. I'm going to just lay it all out, God. Here it is. I'm going to stand before you naked and unashamed. Why? Intimacy requires vulnerability. And if we're going to be intimate with God, we have to be willing to be vulnerable with God. Say, God, I know we haven't talked about it, but I just want to talk about it. I want to own it. And say, here it is.